Hello knitting friends, this is Jacqueline from Jack Knits, and today we're going to talk about weaving in your ends. Ugh, I know, not a favorite topic. It's one of those necessary things that we feel like we have to quickly get done at the end of our project because we're so anxious to see our, our finished piece. We just kind of rush through it. I'm sure some of you feel a little bit like this about weaving in ends. So yeah, it's it's not a it's not a fun task, especially if you have a lot of them on your project. It can be kind of a menial thing. But what I want to encourage you to do is to learn how to weave in your ends correctly and not just do it any old way. Because if you do it just, you know, haphazardly weaving them in through whatever stitches you see, you will be disappointed because eventually all those little ends will start poking out of your knitting and that makes your project all of a sudden look very messy. So we're going to talk about weaving in your ends the wrong way and how to do them the correct way with three different types of fabric, the stocking net stitch, the garter stitch, and the ribbing stitch. So let's take a look at how to do this correctly. All right, let's take a look at our stocking net stitch first. And I want to show you how I um, initially, when I learned how to knit, um, started weaving in my ends. And this is how not to do it. So I just want to give you some comparison. So I um, use some alternating or contrasting color yarn to show for my weaving in ends here just so we can see exactly what I'm doing. But obviously if you were weaving in them for real, you would use the same color yarn as your project because that would be your tail. So I just tied some alternating colors um, for to pretend that these are my tails. So let's I'm going to show you how I used to weave in ends and maybe you do it this way too. Um, because frankly, nobody ever taught me the right way. So I would go to the back side of my work because obviously you want to weave in your ends, ends from the back. And I would generally just kind of go in, oh, some stitches down, down one way, then maybe up the other side. Maybe I would do that two or three times just to make it really nice and secure. And I'm thinking, okay, that, that looks good. You know, you can't hardly see them on this side. Let's um, use the scissors here. Let's snip these ends off and see once what that looks like. Well, it looks okay on this end, but looks what happens on the other end. Oh, got these long strands of your, your ends that if they were the same color, then you might not be able to see them too much, but look what happens when I start, when this fabric starts to stretch. Those strands start becoming loose and eventually those ends are going to start popping out and you're going to um, have these messy ends. So now let's take a look at how we can do this the right way. Okay, let's go over on this side of the fabric, this corner here with my tail. And what we're going to do this time is we want to actually follow the flow of our stitches. And what I mean by that is if you take a look very carefully at your knitting, if you kind of stretch it apart here, you can, you can definitely see where the yarn is traveling through the stitches. Let's start with this little loop up here. This loop is going up here and down through that stitch. You can follow it. Here it comes across, up into this one, around here. And I can kind of see where that stitch is going and I can follow it around my knitting. So that is what we're going to do. We're actually going to follow one of those little yarn um, traffics, traffic flows and, and do that for our weaving in. And this is how, and it's, it's, it's fairly simple. You don't have to, you know, pull it apart to see exactly. It's a very simple process. So you also notice uh, when you're knitting on the back side, you've got a series of upside down U's here going across with your stitches, these bumps, and then a series of right side up U's right above it. So to weave in your ends, I'm going to start with my upside down U on my bottom row here. I'm going to stick my needle in there, and then I'm going to go up through the adjacent one to the right of the up, or right side U, up into there. Pull my yarn through. Now I'm going to follow that trail of yarn and that shows that I'm going to go down into my adjacent U here and then 
then if you see where the yarn is going, it's going back into this upside down U that I previously went in. Okay, so you're following the path there. And then just pull it, and pull it about as tight as the stitches are in your regular knitting. Not too tight, not any looser. So now let's keep following that strand of yarn and it's going around here. So I'm gonna go up through this adjacent upside down U and into the previous U that I had up here. And again, I'm gonna go down in through the adjacent stitch over here and up through the previous one I used down here. Do it one more time. You really only have to do it a few times, maybe three or four times. Up through this adjacent stitch, in through the previous one. Okay, let's do it one more time. Down through this one, up through the previous one. Okay, that should be good. Now, so now you can see that my tail is following the same flow as the rest of my stitches. And that's important because when I start stretching it afterwards, it has the same tension as the regular stitches. So those ends are not going to pop out. So let's see what it looks like. Let's trim off this end nice and close. First of all, let's take a look at the other side. Almost completely invisible. And you can see a little bit of that darker purple there, but that's because it's a different color. If it was the same color, you would not see that at all. And then, Let's give it the old stretch test. If I start wearing this garment and I'm stretching it, see how that end is not budging? It is not moving at all. It is not going to start popping out. It is there for good. So that is the way to weave in your ends by following the stitch flow in your project. So that is with stocking net stitch. Let's show how to do it with garter stitch next. Okay, with the garter stitch, it's, it's a very similar process. It, it doesn't look that much different than the stocking nets. Basically, we're still going to follow the stitch flow. We're, we're doing that same concept, going, doing this weaving in and out of those stitches, following the flow of the yarn. And we're also going to use these upside down U's and our U's for the basis of what we, where we're putting our needle in. So let's start here close to our close to our end of our tail. We're gonna start with this upside down U. Let's stick our needle in there. Then go, same thing we did with the stocking, that we'll go to the adjacent one up and to the right of our U on the next row up. So let's go through those two stitches. Now we're going to follow that same yarn pattern and go up and over and down into the adjacent U right next to it back up through the upside down U below where we already previously went in. So you're seeing that it's really the same pattern. It's not that much different from stocking that to a garter stitch. Again, adjacent upside down U, back up to the previously stitch that we just went through. Adjacent U into that previously adjusted or previously um, stitch that we use below, below. And again, don't pull them too tight nor too loose. Just follow that same tension as the rest of your stitching. Let's do one more. But that's all that you really need is just those three or four stitches. Okay, let's trim this off. Nice and close. very invisible on the back, cannot see it at all. And let's give it some stretching here. And that tail, that end is not budging. So that is how to do it with a garter. Stocking net garter, very similar, same following the stitch pattern. Let's go look at the ribbing next. Okay, with ribbing, this is the, the stitch that is a little bit different um, in weaving your ends. It's actually, I think, a lot easier to do and you're gonna be weaving your ends and ribbing quite a bit because it's often at the base knitting of your, your project. You start with a little bit of ribbing brim for a hat or mittens, so you, you will be using this uh, weaving in tech technique quite a bit. So with the, with the ribbing stitch, this is a one by one ribbing. We have a knitting column and then a purling stitch in between. And what we're gonna be doing is burying our tail
tail ends within this knit column of stitches. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab this knit row right adjacent to where my tail is and I'm going to go into that first side of the, the V stitch and I'm going to kind of loop my needle around and go in the next uh, stitch here kind of wrap my needle around and go in there the next one up so I'm kind of almost doing a wrap and insert wrap it around and insert the next stitch and I'll do that maybe yeah this five times is good pull it all the way through then I'm going to go to the other side let's go through those stitches to get to the other side of that knit column so now we're going to do the same thing going the other direction. So I'm going to start here and then kind of weave it around and go into there, weave it, wrap it, insert it here, and kind of inserting it, looping it through. Now you'll know you're going in the opposite direction if you try to go it from the other end. It's very difficult to wrap it around and insert it. See how that's hard to do? So you want to do the, the easier way, and that's inserting it, wrapping it, Twisting it all the way through. All right, there we go. Pull it on through. And snip it off again. Nice close tail. And let's see what it looks like on the other side. Again, very invisible. You do have this little strand that you see across here, but again, if it's the same color, you're certainly not gonna pick that up. And this is a very, very sturdy uh, weave in to take capability with the ribbing you know there's a lot of stretching going on but this tucks it in there so securely that that end is never going to pop out so there you got it the appropriate and correct way to weave in your ends do this final step you won't be sorry to make sure that your finished project looks the best that it can be so I hope you found this helpful and that you learned something today if so please like and don't forget to subscribe to receive notifications of new videos all about knitting tips and stitches and creative patterns. Thanks for watching knitting friends. Happy knitting.